All right, today, proving triangles congruent by side angle side and HL, hypotenuse leg. So you just talked about proving triangles congruent by side, 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 and now we have proving triangles congruent by two other means, two other shortcuts. All right, and we did go through these shortcuts with your triangle cutouts. Um, so here they are, again, again, definition, side angle, side. If two sides in the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides in the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. All right, and what do we mean by included? Included means in between. Here are the two sides that are congruent, included. It's in between. Again, two sides, included. All right, and for the two triangles, they do have to be in corresponding position. Okay, so side, angle, side. The angle is in between the two sides. The angle is in between the two sides. All right. Use the diagram to name the included angle between the given pair of sides. So, for the first one here, which is the included angle? If we're talking about the segment WZ and segment ZY, there are two segments. All right, which angle is included? All right, so angle Z is the included angle. Okay, angle Z. For the second one, we have segment WX and segment YX. Again, which angle is included? And that would be angle X. And for the third one, we have segment WX, again here, and segment WZ. All right. Now, how many of you think it's angle W? I would ask you, how many angle W's are in this diagram? I see three of them, all right? So which angle W is included in between these two sides? And it would have to be angle X, W, Z, the large angle, all right? X, W, Z. All right, proof, proving triangles congruent, all right? We're proving triangles congruent. So far, we've only talked about side, 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 and side, angle, side, to prove triangles congruent, all right? Here we go. First one, given segment BC is congruent to segment DA, all right? And we do want to have two triangles pulled out and marked in corresponding position. So I'll pick triangle ABC as my original position triangle. So that means I want one that looks just like that. And it's in corresponding position. All right, which means segment BC is congruent to segment DA. So BC, so that's going to be DA, that's congruent. And the other point is obviously C. All right, so I have it in corresponding position. And I can check. A corresponds with C. Yep. B corresponds with D. Yep and C corresponds with A. Okay, we have it in corresponding position. And that's given. All right, second one. Segment BC is parallel to segment AD. Again, that's given. All right, now if you think back to chapter three when we talked about parallel lines, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna use my original diagram here and we have these are our parallel lines, all right? I'm gonna use this as my transversal, all right? What angle pair relationship do we have in this diagram then? All right, there are my two parallel lines and my transversal. I see these angles. And what kind of angle pair relationship do those angles have? They're alternate interior angles. And when we have parallel lines, what's true about alternate interior angles? They are congruent. So we have angle BCA congruent to angle DAC. And our reason is if parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, 
this angle here is this one. So right now in our diagram we have a side and we have an angle, congruent. All right. Now, again, looking at my original diagram, okay, looking at my two triangles, I notice the two triangles are sharing this side. Okay, they're sharing that. So, can I say that segment AC is congruent to segment CA? Yeah, congruence is reflexive. It's the same segment. All right, looking at our triangles now, do we have congruent triangles? We have a side, we have an angle, we have a side. Side, angle, side. So, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And again, it was by side, angle, side. So if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Okay? So, much shorter than our previous proofs where we had to show all three pairs of sides congruent and all three pairs of angles congruent. All right, right triangles. Again, in a right triangle, the sides that make the right angle are called the legs. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Okay? So, in a right triangle, we have a congruence theorem for only right triangles and it's called hypotenuse leg. We call it HL. Hypotenuse leg. So if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and the corresponding leg of a second right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And this only works for right triangles. It only applies to right triangles. Okay, versus side 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 and side angle side angle side apply to any and all triangles. This one only applies to a right triangle. Okay? All right, another proof here. Again, I want to look at do I have triangles in corresponding position? I got segment WY is congruent to segment XZ. That is given. And I'm looking at triangles WYZ, so I'm looking at this triangle. I'm going to use that as my original position, which means I need to have one that looks like that in corresponding position. And W corresponds with X. W is up here, so X has to be up here. Y corresponds with Z. Y is over here, Z needs to be over here. And Z corresponds with Y. Z is over here, Y is there. So segment WY that's this one, is congruent to segment XZ. So we have a pair of sides. All right, segment WZ is perpendicular to segment ZY. That's given. Now, what does this cause? Two lines being perpendicular, what does that cause? segment WC perpendicular to segment ZY. That means angle WZY is a right angle. If perpendicular lines, then they intersect and form a right angle. Okay, so we have a right angle here. Same thing, X 
y, segment x, y is perpendicular to segment z, y. Again, that's given. Segment x, y is perpendicular to z, y. So again, where do we have a right angle? We have a right angle there. So angle z, y, x is a right angle. And my reason is same as 3. Okay. Now, so far, all I have is one pair of sides congruent. And those sides happen to be the hypotenuse, right? Now that we know we have right angles. So can I get a pair of legs congruent? Well, if I look back at the original diagram here, I notice the two triangles are overlapping. Is there a freebie here? Something that's congruent just by the way the diagram's drawn. And yes, there is. Segment ZY is congruent to segment YZ. Again, that is congruence is reflexive. The two triangles are sharing it. So that is reflexive. Okay? Now, do we have congruent triangles? Do we have side, side, side? No. Do we have side, angle, side? No. But we have right triangles. Do we have hypotenuse leg? Yes, we do. We have congruent triangles then. So triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle XZY. If the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Thank you, and we will talk to you tomorrow.